So is it perfect? No. Can it replace humans? No. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing awesome during the summer. Today I wanted to give you a quick update cause there have been a very exciting release in the AI space, namely OpenAI Codex model. So this is the latest model by OpenAI and everybody seems to be crazy about it and for good reason. So today I want to tackle a few aspects of the model and see what you think about it. So let's get going. Codex. This is the hottest model out there. At the end of June, OpenAI released Codex, an AI that translates natural language into code. Together with GitHub, they launched the first Codex-powered app, GitHub Copilot. When it comes to access, GitHub Copilot initially was being trained internally. I think I read a study where like 300 GitHub employees got access to it so they can play with it and see potential edge cases. And now that they feel more comfortable with it, they are rolling it out to more and more people in private beta. They call it technical preview that you can also sign up to. I am leaving link in the description box if you want, please do it. And for now, the access to the testers is for free. However, GitHub states clearly that the idea down the road is to create a commercial product that users will probably have to pay for. So that's something to take into consideration. Right now, it's still kind of in laboratory phase. They are still tweaking certain things that are not optimal in this product, but down the road, it will be a solution that customers will pay for. Because of that, it will probably be like super broadly accessible and you will not have to sign up and wait for it. You will just get it right away. Copilot is available to Today as a Visual Studio Code extension. But in case you don't get it, the great news for everybody that has OpenAI API access is that OpenAI will release it there also later this summer. So we can all explore the model capabilities and start building super cool apps based on it via OpenAI API. Isn't it cool? All right, so how does GitHub Copilot work? The model, OpenAI Codex, was trained on publicly available source code and natural language texts. So it understands both programming languages and human languages. The GitHub Copilot editor extension sends your code and comments to GitHub Copilot service, which then uses OpenAI Codex to synthesize new code and suggest for you new lines and functions. There are a couple of things that caught my attention that suggest that Codex has a high chance of being a younger brother of GPT-3. It's not being talked about publicly, it's presented as a different model, of course, but its capabilities and the way it was trained strongly suggests it's a very similar language model, more specialized to translating natural language into code and generally more specialized in the coding languages. So, as you probably remember about GPT-3, I am talking more about GPT-3 here, 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 and here, and probably in a couple other places, because I'm very excited about this model. GPT-3 is a large language model, meaning it has super powerful capabilities when it comes to mastering different languages. And coding is really yet another subset of languages to master. So models like GPT-3 and Codex itself have quite an easy time of mastering coding languages. Copilot draws context from your existing comments and code and then suggests lines of code or even whole functions. It's important to remember that GitHub Copilot is a code synthesizer, so it does not draw from the existing code, it does not copy paste it into your code, but rather synthesizes completely new code based on the existing libraries. Perhaps you've been wondering how good GitHub Copilot actually is right now. GitHub has recently benchmarked Copilot against publicly available Python functions, and the results are pretty good, but still far from perfect. During the test, they blanked out function bodies and they asked Copilot to fill them in. And Copilot got it 43% right of the time during the first attempt, and if allowed 10 attempts, it rose from 43% to 57% accuracy. However, the model is getting smarter all the time, so I guess the results will become better and better with time. 
Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> GitHub mentions that Copilot works with a broad range of programming languages and frameworks. The technical preview does especially well with Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby and Go. But it understands dozens of languages and no matter what language you're trying out, it can guide you through the initial shaky territory. Training set. Apparently, GitHub Copilot has been trained on billions of lines of publicly available source code and also natural language, mostly English. So it understands both most of the developer framework and languages out there, but also natural language. Now, why was it trained on publicly available source code, you may ask or not, but I am asking, so here's the answer. According to GitHub Copilot makers, this is considered a fair use across the machine learning community. The idea is that the model is gaining insight and its accuracy from publicly available collective intelligence. It does sound really nice in theory, however, there might be problems associated with that particular choice. And I think GitHub is aware of that because it mentions that it's really open to the discussion on what are the best practices in training such large language models designed to help coders. The potential problems with that approach are that code that is publicly available on GitHub is not always usable, it's not always bug free. There is a lot of publicly available source code that has insecure patterns, bugs, or simply references to outdated APIs or idioms. And when Copilot synthesizes code suggestions for you based on such data that it was trained on, it can also synthesize code that contains these patterns that you don't want to have in your code. A good parallel is with GPT-3 when, while it was trained on publicly available uh, resources on the internet, including different forums where you can find a lot of offensive language. And then later on, developers found that GPT-3 is sometimes, if not filtered, spitting out abusive content, for example. And this is because of the data that it was trained on. So that's the potential downside. But GitHub says that, first of all, it developed a couple of tools that when you work with them should work against it. And it will also work on lowering the number of low quality code in the training set of the model. So it will no longer repeat these mistakes. At the moment, this is a pretty rough first version. So if you have access to Copilot, if you're the lucky one, <laughs> use your own judgment when you make decisions as Per your code. Another interesting characteristics of GitHub Copilot is that it can only hold a very limited context. So even single source files that are longer than a few hundred lines are clipped and then only the immediately preceding context of the code is being used to generate the new output. But this is something that Copilot is working on and this will be improved in the future. Apparently, Copilot works best if you divide your code into a couple of small functions, use meaningful names for function parameters, and make sure to write good comments as you go. What's cool about Copilot is that it provides alternative suggestions, just like in case of GPT-3-based Copy AI, for example, where you want to create a new marketing copy and you're looking for a cool tagline, then the GPT-3 model based service provides you with a couple of alternatives so you can choose cherry pick the right one or actually take part of it and then improve based on it. The same situation happens here. The copilot provides alternative suggestions and then you can accept or reject it and also manually edit it. Then Copilot adapts to your edits and gets closer and closer to matching your coding style. So now let's face the question whether Copilot can replace the developers. The answer, I guess, is not. First of all, this is not picture perfect code writing assistant that does not make mistakes. As I mentioned, Copilot is trained on billions of lines of code available publicly and not necessarily filtered. So we can find all sorts of code suggestions there and it will be your responsibility to curate it every time and decide whether you want to keep this particular suggestion or ask Copilot to come up with a new one. You are the brains of the whole operation here 
and it only tries to understand your intention based on the given limited context and give you the best suggestion it can, just like every human assistant. But it's worth to remember that it might suggest the code that may not work or, as a matter of fact, not even make sense. GitHub Copilot does not test the code that it suggests, so the code might not even compile or run at all. Again, very similar situation when writing marketing copy, you definitely need to be the brains of the operation and you definitely need to choose the best suggestions that GPT-3-based platforms such as Copy AI provide. Okay, I don't know about you, but I feel like the developer's experience has just gotten a little bit, if not much better with GitHub Copilot. This technology should enable existing software engineers to be more productive, focused on the more relevant tasks and getting rid of these repetitive, boring tasks that have nothing to do with creative code writing. Another super exciting thing is that I think GitHub Copilot has the potential to lower the barrier for people that are very low code or no code at all. And down the line, I can imagine a service that can translate purely from natural language to code and help people that have a hard time getting into this world to actually create applications just based on their natural language comments or at least when they are starting from scratch and learning a new framework or a new language they will have this friendly assistant that will always guide them through this shaky territory we all know these situations when you, I don't know, start learning Python and the first things you do, you need to go through all the docs and Google through every possible issue that comes across. Personally, my experience with that is really negative. I think we are wasting a lot of time doing that and it's pretty frustrating, let's face it. So, so having Copilot should minimize the friction in that department, which is very exciting, I think. Applications like this and the ones that will go deeper in that direction of translating natural language to code will just make the world of code more accessible to mere mortals that don't code. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think about it. Are you going to try it out or not? Let me know in the comment section and see you next time.